a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Right out here and uh, gather up some more of this firewood. Gather some firewood today. I'm gonna stack it. And then uh gotta put up a cow pen today. Catch some road cows, neighbors' cows are over on this property, so we're gonna try and catch them. Then we got some grass cutting to do. <coughs> and then after that. May do a little tilling. Full day ahead, as always. Full day ahead. All right, let's get it. We're gonna start stacking this stuff up. But hopefully, Saturday we'll get some cameras out. Whew. We'll see. Put this thing in neutral. Let's go. Good stack. All right, so we're gonna get back on the tractor and uh, go drop this off. And I think we're gonna put a put a mower on this thing, cut a little grass. Uh, cutter over here. All right, we got the uh, got the cutter on the lawnmower, and it's just a finish mower, so it's just pretty much a just a mower deck. We put on the lawnmower, pull behind PTO mower. And uh, we are going to set up this cattle catch pen. See if we can catch the neighbor's cows that are coming onto the property. So, yeah, right now we're kind of running against the clock it's, it's, cl it's already cloudy rain's moving in and we just really want to get this disking done so we can I think it's soybeans that we're putting, putting in the ground next and all this again is new to me if you're just now if you're just this is the only video you've watched where you just now follow my channel this is all all new to me I've never done any kind of planting before so we, we've all uh, learning process we've already planted the corn and then like I said next we've got our soybean field soybean fields being dissed right now I'm gonna be doing that and then we'll uh, I don't know what day we'll do it there's actually my co-worker on the track I don't know when we'll actually start putting the soybeans in the ground. Again, I'm still learning the timeline of all this stuff. And 
most mostly what you've seen up to this point is just me doing a bunch of trapping. So it's pretty cool that as the seasons change, so do our uh, our job tasks, the uh, requirements, and all that kind of stuff. So now I'm going to go hop in the cart. follow the tractor with the, the panels that's where we're putting this uh, this catch pan up at that's a field that just had fertilizer put on it last night so that's definitely getting soybeans now we are back in familiar territory watch come out here and I don't have my rifle you just watch a coyote pop up super close and not even be in a rush to run off it happens every time if you don't have a rifle I can carry that rifle every day of the week and I, I carry it At least three three days a week out here and if you see a coyote it's gonna be a long ways off I've shot one coyote since I've been here and I've seen a ton of coyotes I've seen a ton on camera and then I've seen a good handful of them out here riding around but they're always running, right? Coyote hardly ever stops. Always on a trot or a jog or something. But you watch today, since I don't have a rifle, live will pop out right in front of me. <laughs> oh, me. So this, there really ain't even no uh, main topic to this video. This is just, I guess, a a day in the life, I guess you could say. It's not a bad life. Not a bad life. Beats the mill. Hands down, beats the mill. Beats shift work. May not pay as much. Well, it don't pay as much. Don't pay nowhere near as much. Less than half. But, that's what the stump grinding's for. That's what the trailer rentals are for. That's what the trapping on the side is for. Thankfully, the guy I work for, he lets me take off a pretty good bit. Sometimes two days a week, if we're not busy planting or if we're not busy, he, he's real good about letting me take off, which is a blessing. So he, he gives me the opportunity to uh, make, make some more money on the side. And I get to learn a lot while I'm here. I mean, in, in truth, I, I doubt I'd ever even got into trapping. I know, I, I mean, I probably wouldn't have got into trapping unless I came to uh, this job. But, I mean, I've been an outdoorsman, I guess you could say, all my life. I grew up outside. I've always been hunting. I don't hunt much anymore, but I've always been a hunter. Small game, turkeys, deer a little bit. But always outside and I've, I've never gotten into trapping before never even thought about it until I got this job and then uh, the guy that I replaced he took me on this trap line the same one that we're riding right now same one y'all see me riding and checking out all the time and really they were doing just a bunch of uh, nest raider type traps they had the, the live cages out here and they had just gotten a bunch of dps it started with that and he, he started showing me the ropes on that and that's kind of what got me into everything else they had some predator traps out here 
I want to say they had like six out here. They still don't have too much. They could probably put a bunch more out here if they wanted to. Um, a bunch of, uh, they, could, they could put a bunch more predator traps out here if they wanted to. <clears throat> but they introduced me to trapping and got on YouTube started watching all that I could uh, unbeknownst to me at the time a family member was doing trapping a lot on the side as a side income got in touch with him and he's been pretty much my mentor through this any questions I have I call him or he'll watch my videos and give me some pointers you know he also has a full-time job on shift work, so we ain't been able to meet up yet, but that is in the plans at some point to meet up and follow him on some of his jobs. But uh, this job right here introduced me to, to trapping. You know, kind of just taught myself the, uh, the little bit that I know so far. But anyway, that was a long enough ramble. We're going to keep on going up here to where we uh, think the cows are coming from. A part of the property, the, a corner of the property that they're coming from, we think. And uh, put up these panels. All through here, we've seen tracks. After that last rain we had, there were still old tracks back there. This road system, uh, they use to uh, get to feeder to feeder. So all the feeders, y'all see me filling up neighbor's cows i haven't even told y'all what's going on the neighbor's cows come over here on this property they get out and they come over here and they use the road system on this property and they go from feeder to feeder and they will wipe out uh the feeders that we have in one night pretty much and this last group this is the biggest i've only been here a little bit and this was, uh, I've already seen cows over here a couple of times, a couple of different instances where cows have gotten out. And this was the biggest group of cows I've seen. It was like five, five cows. So, I mean, a group of five cows, they'll wipe out a feeder and one, uh, feeders in a night, easy. So, I mean, that's, property owner spends thousands of dollars on supplemental feed for these uh the, the wildlife here so having cows that are escaping escaping come over here and eat eat that money up literally can't have that so we're gonna see if we can catch them and uh go from there but this is the the area that uh we're gonna put this this uh, catch pen in. Alright, here is the catch pen that we have put up. Boss man's uh, blading the roads while we got the tractor over here. So, he is going to blade his way to a deer feeder that we have down there. And then he is going to bring the deer feeder and uh, put it in this pen. So the cows are eating all the feed out of the deer feeders. So if they are still hanging around, we don't know if they are or not, because some old tracks, uh, the property owner, not the property owner, the owner of the cows was notified two weeks ago when we first saw them that they were over here and we think and we have on camera the the owners coming to get the cows uh so they uh they they know that we know the cows are over here and historically whenever they get their hand you know spanked about having their cows getting loose over here they'll come and get them and get them away so we don't know if they're still over here 
I wrote, we rode around a little bit yesterday and looked for fresh sign, didn't see none. Today when we came over here, the feeders still had feed in them. We don't see any fresh tracks, which you ain't gonna be able to do because we ain't had no rain uh, in a couple of days. Uh, we didn't see any other fresh sign. So we are going to take the deer feeder just in case and put it in this catch pen and see if we can get these cows on camera. I got a camera set up over here. And just so you don't get the wrong idea, we are not baiting these cows to this property. This property is in the middle of thousands of acres, okay? Thousands of neighborhood acres. So these cows have to come a good distance to get to these feeders. But because they've been doing it so long and so repetitively the cows remember how to get here so when they turn them out well, i shouldn't have said turn them out when they get loose they uh they come here they make the round for a couple of weeks it's normally a couple of weeks that they wipe out all the feeders you know they wipe out all the corn that we plant and then the owners will be found contacted fussing back and forth get your cows blah 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 and then they they come in here and they get the cows they call them out and uh we're left with literally thousands of dollars in uh crop damages and uh where they've ate ate the corn out of uh, the deer feed so we're not baiting them we are just trying to get them into this one pen if they are in this property again they're coming from a long ways away to this property so this is what we're doing. Boss man's gonna bring the feeder, put it in there. Camera's set up over here. And we're just gonna see if they show up. And with me checking this area almost every day, we will hopefully come in on this cart, come down the road this way. Feeder is gonna be in the back. And hopefully close the gate, we'll see. Even if we can catch just one, you know, that would be a benefit. Uh, tell me what y'all would do in this situation. Uh, like I said, this is the first land management job I've had. This is the first time I've ever had to deal with neighbor's cows getting loose repetitive, repetitively. Apparently, this has been going on for like 15 years. Uh, what would you do? This is what we're doing. We're going to see if it works. Boss man's bringing the tractor and the feeder now. it at the very back of the pen in hopes that when I come up the trail all the cows will be facing this way toward the feeder and that I'll be able to at least get in here and close the gate and catch catch at least one or two of them we will. all right we are hauling butt trying to uh Get to the tractor, the other tractor on the disc, and finish disc in uh, some fields. We got two fields left. The disc. We are trying to get there before the rain starts coming down because it's getting close. You know how you can start smelling the rain. gonna run over here relieve my partner he's gonna go hop on he's either gonna go eat lunch or hop on another project I'm not sure and we're gonna finish this in the last two fields <coughs> man. my sinus is tore up man all pawing out everywhere We're gonna shoot over here. Alright, we are in the tractor. Trying to make a few final passes on this field. My co worker is already doing 90 
99% of it. So we are going to disc up this last little bit. It is starting to sprinkle. I looked on the radar and uh, it looks like just a tiny little passing shower. But with this soil type, which is nothing but clay, this stuff will get tacky in a heartbeat. And once it gets tacky, it plugs that thing up real bad. So we're going to do what we can. All right. All right. So that's the wrap on this field right here. I only made just a couple of passes. Finish up. And we have one more field to do. We'll be done with the disking. And it'll be in time for the rain. The little bit of sprinkling that we have all ago was just a little passing shower that I saw on the radar. So shouldn't be anything to worry about. Ain't got no clogs back there in the disc, so that's good. But that's it. Uh, let's see what time it is. Oh, man, it's only 11.30. So 11.30. I don't know exactly how long uh, the other field will uh, take me. And after that, we'll be going back. Dropping this. Hopping on the little tractor to start cutting some grass. Y'all come along. Alright, here's our next and final field here one portion has been planted in corn corn that did not do as good as we wanted it to and uh, this side's gonna be in soybeans not a big field so we'll see how it goes Get lined up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down the perimeter here and try and come, come back up the center. Come back up the center. And then that's how I want to be making my loop. I'm just going to be trying to make a loop like that. Alright. Let's see if we can get straightened out here and for y'all that have never drove a tractor before I've never drove a tractor like this before we are in B3 uh, that's a whole thing on its own but we are in B3 we're gonna drop the disc We are going to disc at about 1500 RPMs. That's what my co worker was doing. We're going to see how that works. behind me as I do this like I said this is all fairly fairly new to me and when you're dealing with tractors and plowing and disking and everything you gotta be try to go in a straight line as possible and you gotta be watching behind you make sure ain't nothing screwing up so even though y'all are just looking straight ahead I'm looking I'm looking behind me and I'm looking ahead of me I'm trying to stay I'm trying to stay in a straight line I'm also trying to keep an eye on that back there. Now we're going to try and split the field in the middle here. Going back down the center now. Trying to keep a straight line. 
while also watching behind us. So, it don't take much for the soil to get tacky. And then it'll be clogged up back there and then we'll have a problem. that the disc does a better job coming straight out versus turning inside the field like I was doing. So we did start doing that. We just started making long lines. So we finished that and now we are going to take this, uh, this tractor and the disc back to the shop and we are going to hop on the other little tractor that we put the little finishing mower on gonna start cutting grass. A lot of grass on this place. Grass, grass, grass. Alright. It's a good way to make a living. Ain't bad at all. We're gonna ease on back. Uh, make sure this thing's all the way up. We are actually gonna go into, since we're traveling, we can go into a C. C1 probably. Travel at lower RPMs. And really, it's, it's just gears. So, A being the lowest, and then you have independent gears. Think of this as a big gear and then little gears. Maybe if I'm explaining that right. But A, you're going to go a lot slower, have a lot more torque, I think. And then these are, uh, this would be your speed increase, I guess. I may be butchering that, but I know that C1 is faster than B3. I do know that. And we can travel at lower RPMs. Make sure that our disc is up in the air because we don't want to be dragging that all the way back. Whew, ain't bad, guys. Ain't bad. Get in here and on this tractor, you listen to a podcast on the radio or listen to the radio. On the other little tractor that I'm about to get on, I'm going to put my headphones on and listen to the podcast and radio on that. So it's all good, guys. 
it's all good. Normally I like to eat my sandwich in this tractor versus out there on the other tractor because when you're in the other tractor, it ain't got no calves, so you might be, you might, you might catch a bug or two on your sandwich, but it's just a little extra protein. This is probably going to turn out to be a long video. I, I didn't even plan on making a video today, but this is going to turn into probably a 20 minute video. I ain't been keeping up with uh, how long the video is. Videos have been. We are probably going to be a, a long video here. And like I said, I wouldn't really know main theme or uh, title. Uh, like I said, I didn't even have a, I didn't even plan on doing a video today. A big video. But a day in the life of property management. Good life. Good life. Beats shift work, beats mill work. Alright, we're going to hop on the other track. This is what we're working with. Just got off the big tractor. We are going to start cutting a little grass. And pretty much what I do with this little tractor right here, is I'm going to cut, y'all can see already, where we cut last week. And we just cut along both sides of the fence and we weed eat up under it. A lot of grass cutting that goes on here. So it's uh, probably going to take me out. Well, I know it's going to take me out the rest of the day and I still won't finish. So I'll show a little clip of me cutting grass. But uh, we're probably going to call it at that, guys. Hope y'all enjoyed the video a little bit different, but we'll see y'all around. Y'all be good.